On a Monday afternoon, one week ago, students worked through their normal day in the library, many unaware that the education system was on the cusp of a major potential change. This change went by the name of House File 651 and planned to implement a school choice voucher system into Iowa. This bill died in the House, resulting in groans from some and cheers from others. Uh, I, I think the backlash this year from not just educators, public educators in the state, but parents across the state uh, was the number one reason that it, that it didn't come out of committee today. Here's how it would work. Currently, the state government supplies a certain amount to public school districts per student to cover the cost of education, keeping public schools running and free. This bill would make it so a student can either switch districts or switch to a private school, with the money that would have gone to the public school following them to this new school to either fully cover or partially cover the cost of tuition, depending on the price of the school. It is a sort of coupon given to families for choosing private schooling. A similar bill was introduced to the Education Committee in recent years, but was voted down as it would have cost the state $220 million. Any way you slice it, it's going to take away money from the public schools. This bill attempts to make a compromise, as Walt Rogers has stated this plan will be completely revenue neutral. Our big concern is where is that money going to come from? If, it's, if it has a price tag of some sort, we're not going to raise any new additional funds. The logical thing would be that that money would come from, from what used to go to public schools. Representative Walt Rogers, a writer of this bill, assures that this is not an issue. When I talk about revenue neutral, it's revenue neutral from the standpoint of the state having to appropriate new dollars for it. Still, Waterloo School Board President Shanley McNally is a bit skeptical. To add a few more million dollars, I just, I have no idea where they're gonna find that money. <laughs> Currently, around 60% of Iowa's budget goes to education, an increase to this budget to keep public schools strong as this bill comes into action seems unlikely. But would this bill really hurt public schools or help them? It might depend where you live. School board member Eric Giddens explains it like this. It could uh, have an effect of actually helping in some ways some quote unquote more desirable districts but that would be at the expense of, of less desirable districts. So uh, that's something that we're against as well. What he's saying is that as more students go to their preferred schools, they'll take that money with them, leaving the undesired schools with less money, making that school spiral into worse and worse conditions for the students. That is one theory. Rogers has another one. The data has shown that the opposite happens. If you go to edchoice.org, they got a lot of this data. And basically they found that when that happens, school choice is entered into a system like that, it makes the actual, the public schools better because they they then say, well, what are, what are we doing that could make our school better? If we're gonna lose students, let's look at our system and, and make it better. EdChoice has a multitude of statistics available to the public on the effects of a voucher school system. One particular article on this page, entitled School Choice is Not a Rorschach Test, stood out. Rorschach tests are known for being subjective, so would this article bring conclusive evidence to end the debate completely? When comparing public school and private school test scores, a slide from this page says, of the 18 random assignment studies conducted, 13 have found positive outcomes for all or at least one subsample of students, four have found no impact, and two have found negative outcomes. So is that it? Move students to private schools and they'll achieve more? There's a bit more to it. As EdChoice says on its site, random assignment studies show test scores, but do not show what is called external validity, or other factors that could lead to the dependent variable of the test scores. In Dr. John Witt's study evaluating the school choice program in Milwaukee, he found that parents who chose to send their children to private school were also more educated and generally more interested in their children's education, pushing them to achieve more. These domestic habits have a large effect on student achievement and add context to the random assignment studies. Another note on these studies, in looking at the slide pulled directly from EdChoice, one may have noticed that while they said 18 studies were done, when looking at what was called positive, negative, and neutral, the number of studies actually add up to 19. In research for this piece, the study has been seen used on EdChoice three times. The first is in the slide showing 13 with positive effects, 4 without impact, and 2 with negative effects. Just below that slide, the study is used again, this time showing that 12 had positive effects, 3 had no effect, and 3 were neutral. 
On a page called A Win-Win Solution, the 18 random assignment studies are mentioned a third time, this time stating that 14 were positive, with only 2 being neutral and 2 being negative. The discrepancies in the usage of this data forces one to doubt its legitimacy. Whatever the original study showed, whatever the internal validity and the external validity, it's easy to see how the discourse over the school choice voucher system continues. That website was put together for the purpose of trying to convince people that school choice or vouchers uh, are good for students, good for families, uh, and so they're going to they're gonna have uh, as much information or propaganda on there that they can to uh, to, to make their argument. But how can an agreement be reached when even the title of voucher causes disagreement? Voucher, the way it was originally termed, meant the dollars went straight to a non-private um, facility or, or entity or school. This goes, sets up what we call an ESA account, an uh, educational savings account, that goes to the parent in the name of the child, in the name of the student. Others disagree. It's a voucher, it's nothing else. You know, you gotta be realistic and make it sound like what it is. At this point, no homeschooling support is in this bill. On the subject, Rogers says, Now, maybe in the future, but uh, it doesn't have homeschooling in this present bill. Moving away from the budgeting and educational aspects of the bill, other issues emerge. Not everyone has the ability to move to a private school. Students with IEPs or individualized learning plans may not be accepted at some private schools. Not all are equipped to teach those with learning or even physical disabilities. This can come in the form of rejecting students outright or after time spent at the school, students switching back to a public school that can teach them. We also worry that students who should be receiving services may not be able to get those services or that certain students might not be allowed to attend those private schools. The worry of resegregating certain schools also comes up. Open enrollment, or switching from one school to another, is allowed in all districts of Iowa except for five. Des Moines, Davenport, Postville, West Liberty, and Waterloo. A diversity clause is set in these areas to prevent white flight, but those in favor of this bill also claim it prevents parent choice. And so you can't open and roll out unless they um, have a certain type of uh of ethnicity come in to replace that person. We worry that the mixture of students in our buildings could be compromised. Currently, public taxes already go to private schools in Iowa, over $50 million a year. This includes non-public textbooks, non-public transportation, tax credits, and non-public students taking part in public extracurriculars. This leads opposers of this legislation to believe private schools already have enough support and that parents already have the choice they need. We want to be clear that we're not against private education. Um, we just think that the system as it is actually already works really well. I think public education <clears throat> is one of the most amazing things that this country offers. It guarantees every single child, no matter what their needs, no matter what their background, no matter what language is spoken at home, it guarantees that every single child receives an education. Currently, 62% of Iowans oppose this kind of legislation, according to public policy polling. Going into the future, the two sides will continue to display their viewpoints. You know, sometimes I run into a lot of people that, you know, they don't really care about politics, they just they care about, you know, more opportunities for kids, and that's really what and why I do it is for uh, more choice for parents, more opportunities for students in the state of Iowa. One of the cornerstones of a great democracy and an awesome community is strong public schools. This has been Jaden Namjadi reporting for the Tiger Highline.